Hey mama, are you a multi-passionate mom who is juggling all the things, nursing a baby, battling laundry, trying to keep it together and keep a spicy marriage, and feeling like you're filling all of it? What's up? I'm Ashley Carroll. I'm here to hold your hand through this process because I believe when you're ready to take control of your life, beat the limiting excuses, step into your own power, you can not only survive, but you can thrive. But you're going to have to show up for yourself. It's time for me to tough love your way through prioritization, taking self-care seriously, getting rid of excuses, reconnecting with your family, kids, and spouse, and quite honestly, learning to love the chaos because the glory is in the journey. It's in the mess. In this podcast, you will find balance for busy mamas, navigating mom guilt, time management strategies, and everything in between with no fluff and lots of fun. Let's go. Hey friend, you know we are online besties. I'm the friend that tells you the brutal hard truths and also celebrates all that you are, and I'm so excited. I'm now offering one-on-one mindset transformation strategies. I really need to come up with a better name for that, but here's what it is. If you're a mom sitting in a space of excuses, of sitting in a space of I'm not good enough, of wondering why you can't seem to get your life together, your communication is kind of off point with your spouse, you're feeling like a hot mess express when it comes to motherhood, and you just feel like there's more for you, but you can't get over your own limiting beliefs, I'm here to slap you around, okay? And y'all know this. I've done this in over 150 episodes on So She Grows podcast. Now it's time to do the work, just me and you. An hour of us together working through and breaking through these limiting beliefs that you have that are holding you back from living your life and really thriving in motherhood and flourishing in your marriage and getting over those mindset blocks. And let me tell you, this is for those who are ready, and I mean really ready, to bust through those limiting beliefs, get over the excuses, and start to take the action, the hard action to change who you are. I'm so pumped. If this is for you, I want you to get in my DMs right now. Also, you can email me at theashcarol at gmail.com. Book these now. Y'all know I have a house full of kids because of the Rona and I only have two spots open. So first come, first serve. It's time to transform your mindset from the inside out. Let's go. Hey guys, today is a bonus episode. I wanted to share with you an interview I did on Beatrice Fargus's Grace Field Wife podcast and her podcast, focuses on growth in the marriage. And so I go on and talk about basically if we focus on these four areas, these four core areas, how it affects our relationships and how we can really grow and just have amazing relationships because of our focus on all these other areas. So I hope you enjoy it. Tune in, listen in, and also give me feedback on what you think I did, how I did on this interview. Okay, guys, so I wanted Ashley to come and speak to you today because I think her content is such a great companion to what I'm trying to do here. So Ashley, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you're here to serve, and why? Yeah, so thanks for having me on, Beatriz. I'm so excited. Um, You guys, if you've been listening to her, her podcast is golden. Do not take it for granted. I've been listening and I'm like, dang, this is good. Good stuff. So um, I'm Ashley Carroll. I am the podcast host of So She Grows podcast for moms. And I am your tough love kind of friend. I love to tell you how it is and um, tell you straight on and hopefully help you eliminate all excuses for Um, in marriage, motherhood, and in your mindset to just really live a really great uh, fulfilled, which is a fluffy word I feel like we use a lot of time, but really a really uh, life that you could thrive in and not just survive in. So um, yeah, the people I speak to most are mamas and uh, we have many things going on. (laughs) Like we were just talking about before this, like I'm juggling a baby, trying to get it to sleep to do this. And you've got dogs in your lap. You know, like um, just real life moms trying to do the dang thing and trying to um, juggle all the things kids while maintaining um, our own selves. And like I said, I want us to thrive and not just survive. So that is my goal. (laughs) Yes, I love that. So one of that's actually one of the uh, reasons why I wanted you to come in and share. I think it's really your kind of your no excuses approach approach because Mm -hmm. I have a lot of that same approach. Mm -hmm. I feel sometimes I'm like, am I a little too harsh? You know, is this a little too tough love? But like, (laughs) I just, that's how I learn best. Mm -hmm. And I hate when people sugarcoat things for me. And Mm -hmm. so I'm like, I just, I have to teach how I learn best. And then the people who that resonates with 
they're going to listen. You know, if it doesn't resonate with them, then they'll, they'll, Mm -hmm. there's, they'll find another content creator out there to, to listen to. So, yeah. And we don't have time. Like as moms, we don't have time. You got to just tell us, tell me what I need to know right now. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And it was like, once I started, once I started listening to your show, I, I, I told you, I, I found the show and I started binging on it because I was like, yes, this is so relatable to me. I actually found it because when you were talking about, you know, who you see your ideal listener is and mm-hmm. I'm, 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 you know, I was reading the comment that you wrote and I was like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wait, wait, that's me. <laughs> that's me. I think I should listen. And so, um, so it was a lot of fun really to discover the show. And because of that, I felt like, and so because of that, I wanted to uh, bring you on. So one of the episodes that um, I found I really enjoyed and I, and I wanted you to bring this in and talk to the listeners about it, because this is uh, something different than what I talk about. And that was the four pillars. Mm-hmm. So can you, can you tell us about the four pillars and how it relates to goal setting? Um, but talk about the four pillars. Maybe that's a follow up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so I believe that there are four main pillars to thrival, which is what I call it. It's like, you know, you're you're surviving, thriving life that you want to have. Um, But it's four main pillars. And the first being you have spiritual, um, because I feel like that is the core of who you are. Um, um, You know, especially your audience can relate to that. Like you speak to women who are faith fueled. And so Add it, let's go through the four first, and then I'll, okay. I, if, you, if you want me to, I can break one, each one down. But you have yep. spiritual, mental, physical, and then uh, mar- marital. I always get mm-hmm. that tongue tied. But um, yeah, those are the main four. And I believe if you really invest in those, and if they are in a place of growth, or in, um, or maybe they don't even have to be in a season of um, you know continuous growth right now, but if if you can look at it and truly say, I'm in a good place in this area of my life, um, then you're going to feel fulfilled. You're going to thrive. You're going to feel good about where you are and everything around you is going to flourish. So, you know, your relationships, your marriage, your, your relationships with your kiddos, your friendships, your um, job. And so at the core, I feel like these four things, if they're in a good place, and or if they're growing, you're going to feel good. You're going to have a good um, relationship. And it all impacts, like you talk about marriage a lot and all of that, um, you know, like if it's kind of like that house thing, you know, if one of the, if you have four posts in a house and one of them is about to break down, well, like the other three are affected. Um, and so it's kind of that ideal of like, if, if even if your spirituality is off, it definitely affects your marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, even if your mental wellness is off, that's going to affect your marriage. And, um, so, you know, it's really important to have those four key things I feel like growing. And then if you look at it and you say, you know what, like it's, it's not in a good place. These, these aren't in areas that I want them to be in. Then I think that that is great self-awareness. I think that then that gives you the permission to start from there and then do something about it. Like you need to acknowledge, okay not where I want to be, and then move forward with doing something in, you know, whichever area you're like, ah, I suck at this right now. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, those are the four that I believe are like do or dies, do or dies. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love that. Cause one of the things that I have uh, learned or been taught before where is you know, our number one relationship is that spiritual relationship. Our number one relationship should be with God. And Mm -hmm. if that relationship is off, then our relationships Mm -hmm. with, in our, certainly in our marriage, but everywhere else is going to, is going to also be Mm -hmm. off and suffer. And so that really um, resonated with me a lot. And the thing that I found that I loved about it is that, because you talked about your spiritual, mental, physical, and your marital, you didn't say anything about your, your relationship as a mother. Mm -hmm. And I, to me, you know, I mean, there's certainly a lot of my listeners maybe that aren't parents yet, but for both of us, we're parents. And we might think of that as one of our number one relationships, the relationships that we have with our children. But I think putting our our marriage relationship before 
mm. our, our children's relationship, I think is so key because I think as mothers, we're just naturally inclined to give all mm -hmm. to our children. And so it takes more effort. It takes more yeah. effort to, to build on that pillar of your marriage and to build on that pillar of your spiritual life and your mental and your physical. So um, that's really uh, kind of what resonated with me both there is I, there is I felt like all these four pillars are the ones that take the most, the most work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And those, and those ones are the ones that are your personal, like, right. You're the, mm. per, who you are at the core and that what creates you, what helps you to, um, be just, I don't even know how to, how to like be, not be a good person wouldn't be the right word, but you know, like to, um, be forward moving in, in like, in life, like what gives you gratitude? What gives you, you know, the reason, you know, the ability to wake up and do what you do every day and do it to the best of your ability and to feel good about it. And like, you know, all these things that we need to feel, to go through life, um, not only just, you know, like stumbling through it, but to really mm -hmm. go through it and enjoy it. And then other people benefit from us too, which is what we right. as moms want the most, mm -hmm. right? Like, I think that's, this is, this is like the vicious cycle that we get trapped in is that, um, you know, we pour ourselves out for, for everybody that we love, our kids, especially. And because of that, then we don't also pour back into ourselves yeah. and, and we don't work on, you know, the most important things that we should be working on, which I believe are these four pillars. And to the detriment, our, our kids are affected. And so we think that we're doing good by, you know, burning the candle from both ends because we love them so much and rightfully so. But then when we aren't paying attention to these four things, that's going to greatly affect them too, because we're, we're drowning we're suffering, mm -hmm. we're drowning. And then we cannot, we cannot pour into them because we're either, um, depressed, we're anxious, we're, we're filled with anxiety and overwhelm. Um, or, you know, we haven't been able to connect spiritually. We feel disconnected from our prayer life. And so then, you know, and that's our core, you know, that's like our stronghold. And so when that's not, um, you know, in a good place and it's not solid, then, you know, we, we just can't serve our family. Well, we can't serve our husbands well. And, um, so yeah, I believe that kind of, if you paid attention to these four things, then ultimately your children will benefit. And so it, you're not a mother first, you're you first, you're the woman first, you're the person first, the human first. And, uh, and most importantly, like the child of God first. And so you need to take care of you first and then it will overflow and impact your, you as a mama and, you know, your kids and, you know, your friends and your coworkers and all that. And so, but yeah, I, I think it's so hard and for us to separate, you know, who we are as people and who we are as a mama because, you know, we love it. We love it. And we find joy in it and we find purpose in it. Um, but yeah, we can't, we can't do it the best without taking yeah. care of ourselves first. Yeah, absolutely. So good. So good. Um, one of the other things I wanted to, to talk about in that is I think, and, um, you had talked about in one of your episodes, I think it was when you talked about goal setting mm -hmm. and in this place you had brought up the four pillars talk to me about, um, because I think goal setting and marriage is so important. And I think it's something, especially for somebody maybe whose marriage right now is not so great, you know, or, you know, or maybe your marriage is normally great, but you know, today it's, it, it kind of, there's ups and there's yeah. downs, especially <laughs> like we're in the midst of quarantine and you know, I, uh, I was talking to our, our business coach and I'm like, you know, this is a really hard time to create content around marriages yeah. when you're like, you know, you're trying not to kill your own spouse. And so <laughs> it's just like, wow. Um, and so in listening to you speak about goal setting in marriage, it's something that really kind of struck me as, uh, yeah, you know, like how often are we doing that? And, and then how do these four pillars kind of fit into that. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. So, I mean, 
It's so funny because my husband and I do this often. Like we don't even wait until the new year. You often think of like goal setting as, you know, let's sit down and like, let's plan all of our goals. And I think that that's the trap that we kind of set ourselves up in is, you know, waiting till the new year. And then we make all these like grandiose ideas and, you know, all these things. And so we're ultimately setting ourselves up for failure because it should be, let's sit down at any given time and talk about what, you know, what do you need? What do you need from me? And, and like when, when you say goal setting, um, it's not just like, where do we want to be in five years? And, you know, it's like on a yacht in Mexico or whatever, you know, like it's none of that. It's, I mean, it it can be that, but mostly it's focusing on like, what do you need from me right now? Like, how can I pray for you right now? Where, where am I falling short right now? It's the tough stuff, man. Like the stuff that I think a lot of us avoid asking. And with this workbook I created, um, my hope is that if you have the paper in front of you, you have the questions in front of you, it gives you the freedom to just say, Oh, you know, like, Oh, she wrote this, you know, she has this question, like, let's answer it together. You know, like, so it's not, it's taking the pressure off of you, but I mean, just stuff that we need to ask because when we get into life and busyness, we, we don't check in with each other enough. And then we get off on different pages and we're just kind of like passing by each other through life. Um, and not really checking in and making sure that we're on the same page, um, emotionally, mentally, physically. I mean, like I, we talk about sex in there, like what, you know, where are you at? And sometimes we don't like to hear the answer and, um, you know, how do you feel mentally and what are, what are your dreams? And where, cause you'd be surprised when you sit down and speak with your spouse, the things that you guys talked about pre-marriage or even like a year ago are different now because things have changed. Kids have happened, jobs have changed, you know, moves have happened, seasons have changed, coronavirus has happened, you know, all these things are affecting us outwardly and we don't realize that it's also changing um, personally for us, which also affects us as a unit. And we need to be on the same page because if I'm going you know, south and you're going north, like we're going to have a problem where we're both like at our destinations and we're not at the same place. Um, and I think that it's also one of those things to just, even if like one of the questions, your answers have changed and, you know, like, it's just a good, Hey, how you doing? It's just a good like reason to check in a way to reconnect and to sit down and dream. And that, I think that that's another missing piece of our relationships is the permission to dream together you know like before kids it's easier for you guys to like lay out on the grass look at the clouds you know and be like (laughs) and be like you know i dream that we have a house with a white picket fence and a dog and you know or whatever but so when we get you know when we're covered and spit up and husbands are working you know 80 hours a week and we can't tell up from down and you know we're doing all the things and we forget to just sit there and be like, you know what? It would be nice if one day I, we did da 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 da, or you know, if one day we had land and one day we, or you know, I really would like to start, you know, investing or you know, saving money or whatever it is, whatever your dreams are, um, big or small, whether they come true or not, there's something intimate and playful and connecting about dreaming together, um, both the realistic and the unrealistic things. I love that. And I kept putting myself on mute because I was taking notes and I didn't want to hear that <laughs> clack, 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 clack <laughs> while you were speaking. No, it's okay. But, um, I love it. I love the idea of dreaming together. And then one of the things that you said um, that I liked was, or that I, that resonated was we don't check in with each other enough, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. we get so wrapped up in life. Mm. And um, especially now, you know, you would think, now, right, as you know, we've just come out of quarantine, or we're just starting to come out of quarantine at the time, you know, as of the time that we're recording this. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you would think you would have time to check in with one another, you mm-hmm. would think, because you're always together. And it's almost like, because of that, you almost check in less, because you take for granted, the fact that you're always together, it's almost like, it becomes easier when life is you know, was normal or back, you know, back then six months ago, you know, let's say you were having your, your date night and you can use that time to check in. And so 
I think it's just such a great reminder to even in this time where things might be a little off and uh, there's all these changes going on, mm -hmm. not forgetting to check into each other. And then the other thing that you said that I loved was having permission to dream mm -hmm. because I mean, really, like, when's the last time, you know, like, when do you, when do you get to do that? It's like, I think my husband and I, like, we dream when we're on vacation, when we're yes. by ourselves, yes. and like, how often do we go on vacation by ourselves without the kids? I mean, right. You know, yeah. But like, that's the time that we sit and we're like, oh, babe, wouldn't you love this? And wouldn't you love that? So I, I really liked all of that. Now, talk mm -hmm. to me, you said you kept referencing questions that you have, and I know what the answer is. But Talk to me about what is it? Where are these questions? What oh, yeah. can our listeners like? What can they? Where can they find it? Yeah. So if you go to the Ash Carol, um, you can go to the top menu bar and it says Goal Setting Workbook, and I will send it to you. It's just a, like I think it's not even more than three pages. It's I believe two pages, a PDF that you can print and take with you to a restaurant, which is literally what my husband and I do. We plan a date night usually. Um, Right now we're in the habit of doing it twice a year. So we take it with us, we're nerds, but we love it because we'll be sitting at the table with these questions. And sometimes um, I have the questions on my phone and I will document them in notes because it's so fun to like look back at last year's questions and answers that we wrote down mm -hmm. together and see what actually came to fruition and like things that, you know, just so like chuckle at like where we were or be proud of like, hey, like, we were really failing in intimacy last year. And like this year, like I, we're really nailing it. Like, I mean, oh my gosh, that's a bad reference. But you know, like, <laughs> um, but you know, like <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing so much better in the area or whatever, you know? Yeah. It's so fun to see the difference and the, you know, the growth that has happened over, you know, short spans of time and to see your marriage actually being fruitful and, um, you know, having forward motion growth is, mm -hmm. is awesome. So yeah, you can just go to my website, the Ash Carol, you can print off those pages. If you go to a uh, goal setting workbook for couples and, um, yeah, it really has been the best thing ever for us to do. And like I said, we plan a date night and just take it somewhere and, um, write it down. And the fun thing is, is you begin to notice sometimes like we'll do these on a date night and we'll look over and like, there'll be a couple that's not even looking at each other. They're both looking at our phones. Meanwhile, my husband and I are like working on our marriage and we can find yeah. value in that. Like we may look like complete dorks, but we're going to be married five years from now. Whereas that couple who is completely ignoring each other probably won't be. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Now, um, do you have advice for um, someone who might say, this is all great, but mm -hmm. we're like barely speaking, you know? Mm -hmm. So is there a middle place and um, a middle place of how to get him to start talking about it? Like you said, you guys were doing it once every, um, you said like once every six months or something like that, yeah. which, mm -hmm. right? Which sounds mm -hmm. awesome. And I, I'm over here thinking like, yeah, you know, I, this is something I want to implement, like to talk to my husband about like, babe, can we start doing this first? Mm -hmm. You know, I think first can mm -hmm. we start and then, mm -hmm. and then how often, what were your thoughts there be? Was it easy? I guess, you know, the first time asking your husband, can we do this? Talk to us about what that looks like. Yeah. So initially like my marriage was not all, we got to a place to where I felt like we were very disconnected. So I think your first step is to acknowledge that, to put it out there and say, look, like, I don't know how you feel, um, but personally, I feel, because you never want to, like you have mentioned on here, you don't ever want to say what they, you know, assume what they feel or accuse them of feeling a certain way. I feel like we're disconnected right now. Um, I, and then, you know, hopefully he will acknowledge that he either feels the same or he feels different and wants to know why you feel that way. But either way, it starts a conversation of like, okay, and then we've got to fix this. Like, hopefully that's your next step is the realization of we got to do something because otherwise, if you continue going on through this path of not speaking or disconnectment or where you feel like you're just roommates in the house, um, that's not a sustainable marriage. So I hope that um, those who are listening that can relate to that hear that with love, but also hear that with the realization of like, it cannot survive. You cannot go, it, that's just not sustainable. Um, ask any married couple who's gone through that and they're no longer together. Um, 
so you first you have to put it out there you have to acknowledge it you have to talk about it and then the first step is just dating each other again like i wouldn't go balls to the wall and talk about you know like let's do this pdf and you know like let's bring these printed out questions um you know like i think the first step is just going on a date and making it a priority saying like we have to reconnect we have to make us a priority or else like it's we're gonna hate the outcome like it's gonna be awful um and my husband and i were in a place like that and we had to date every weekend we dated mm -hmm. every weekend and the first weekend it was awful <laughs> like because you're like what did we talk about like you know you get into this place where you're just sitting across from each other and you're like well um and i challenge you to embrace that awkwardness to sit you know to lean into it and not to go to your phone because that's the easiest thing to do would be like oh well we don't have anything to talk about or this is really weird i'm just going to scroll on facebook um but then you know again you're not giving your marriage the attention it needs and so you need to lean into it and just say you know like how is your day how would, you know, like ask these, like I used to Pinterest, there are tons of Pinterest questions of like what to ask your husband or questions for dinner, you know, dinner dates or like, you know, you can search it however, and they'll give you a bunch of questions. And I used to think of like three or five um, to take with me. And that's how we would conversate. And I would even say like, man, we, st we talk about our kids a lot. Like, do we have anything else to talk about? And it, that used to bother me. But it's like, no, that's a season of life that we're in. Everything that we do right now is kids. So it's okay if we also talk about our kids when we're away from them. Um, and then as time goes on, it gets easier and you find more things to talk about. And you also still talk about your kids and that's okay. Like, so just take one step at a time. But I think that the first thing um, is acknowledging, you know, where you guys are at and both agreeing that something needs to be done about it and then actually doing something about it. And then, you know, when you're in a place of open communication or, um, you know, you've been on a few dates and you talk about this and you say, Hey, like there's these questions that I really think would help us get back on the same page. Um, there are these questions that I really feel like would help us, co um, communicate in a non confrontational way of, you know, where, where do we each see ourselves and, right now and in five years and then if he's like yeah sure like let's do that then sure bring it to the table but i think slamming them down on the table and being like let's do this or we're gonna you know like <laughs> is the wrong way to go about it so yeah I, I hope that was helpful no it it was definitely helpful and as as again as you're speaking i'm taking notes and i'm noticing like okay so now we've gone through two pillars right we talked about your spiritual your relationship with god and then we talked about the marital Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we talked about setting goals. So now my listeners, they know they can go get your goal setting workbook and they can start that, right? They can start dating each other again, embracing mm -hmm. the awkward, you know, even if that means like looking to Pinterest for ideas, but just really trying oh, to yeah. connect with them. Talk to me then about, and I wanted to start with those two first, because that's really what my podcast is about, you know, yeah. our marriage as it, and, you know, and as it relates to our spiritual relationship uh, but there's a a gap in there where I don't really talk so much at least not yet about mm -hmm. um, the mental and the physical piece so talk to us about either one of those two pillars and we'll, let's dig, dive into that a little bit yeah so and also I want to say like before I move on to those two do not be embarrassed that you have to google or Pinterest questions mm -hmm. for conversation between you and your husband or you know ways to send your husband a, you know, a flirty text message or, you know, things like that. Like you may be embarrassed now, but like, look, who's going to be so much better for it in the end. And, you know, the people that you tell that might chuckle at you, laugh at you, like they're going to be jealous of your relationship with your husband later on. And they're going to wish that they had done the same thing. So you just have to stay in your lane work, you know, focus on your relationship and do do the work and and i promise you won't regret it um i just had to say that. anyways no um, i'm so i it's <laughs> like piggyback off that i so so agree with that and i think part of it is you're all you know the listeners she's already or he because there are um a couple you know there's men that listen to this show too mm -hmm. you're already listening to this show 
-hmm. So you're already kind of doing the work. You know, you want to have a good marriage. There is nothing wrong with going out mm -hmm. there and checking Pinterest or Google. There's the people creating those are content creators, just like you and I mm -hmm. going out there and they're trying to come up with ideas for themselves and they're putting it out there for mm -hmm. the world to see. So you're right. Who cares what anybody else might think? And, and, you know, I have a whole episode on godly friendships and real true godly friends aren't going to make fun of you for doing mm -hmm. the thing. They're actually going to be like, Oh my God, that sounds amazing. Where did you find that? Or, yeah. you know, and you guys are going to be able to talk about that, those ideas. So I love that you make that point because it, that is very true. So mm. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Oh yeah. Mental. Okay. So let's talk about that one. I think this one is uh, one that I personally don't struggle with. Um, a ton, but I do know because I'm in the motherhood space and I speak to and speak with a lot of mamas um, and, you know, with or without kids, that your mental wellness is a huge part of your functionality in daily life and in your relationships. And so my goal here is just for you to acknowledge and do a self check of, you know, like take a moment, whether like you're, you're listening to this podcast or you know, and you're driving or whatever, like just take a moment and pause and think about like, am I really okay? Like, am I really doing all right? Is this an, is this normal feeling that I assume is quote unquote normal? Is that actually normal or is something, am I, is something actually going on here? And I think for me, my goal here is just to have women acknowledge, um, and be mindful or be aware of uh, like their internal struggles and if it's just a bump in the road or are we like trying to climb out of the Grand Canyon right now and it's okay either way um, I think you know as you'll hear as you heard me speak on all these other areas I'm huge about acknowledging it doing and then doing something about it and so if you are overly anxious or you are dealing with depression and you're putting yourself on the back burner because you're pouring yourself out in all these other areas you have to step back and say no like i need to take care of this because otherwise you know you cannot serve those people you cannot serve well and you cannot pour into those that you care the most about and so um yeah like you know just mental wellness are you and I mean, it doesn't even have to be like postpartum depression that you're dealing with. It can be like, do you even like, do you have trouble with just always looking at the negative? Then like, let's acknowledge that and like, let's do something about it because it affects your day-to-day -day life. Um, I mean, big to little things like, and then do some, take a walk, start taking walks, start exercising, like just make a plan, you know, say no, if it's overwhelmed that you're dealing with mentally, that's bringing you down and burning you out, then say no to more things. Um, you know, so I just, from big to small here, I just want women to do a self check women and men to do a self check of like, where am I at mentally? Do I feel good about where I'm at? Am I thinking clearly? Am I feeling good? Um, mentally, and then, you know, acknowledging that and doing something about it. Yeah, I love that. I see um, the the take a moment to say, am I really doing okay? You know, mm -hmm. that, that stuck with me. And then um, also saying, you know, when you said being aware of internal struggles, like, is this a Grand Canyon? And the, what I saw there was the Grand Canyon is so deep and vast. Mm -hmm. It would be really hard to try to climb out of that bad boy. Mm -hmm. But if it was just, you know, like a little, a little dip, it would be a lot easier. And right. so I think if uh, we were doing kind of, if we were doing what you're talking about is taking a moment every now and then to just do a self check, where am I at? How am I doing? It would keep us from finding ourselves at the bottom of the Grand mm -hmm. Canyon. And it yeah. would be so much easier to pull us out. And you're right with any, you know, things that we deal with as, as moms or, or whatever, whether it be postpartum or anxiety. Anxiety is one I hear a lot of, mm -hmm. um, you know, just es especially even in times like now or people who have high functioning anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, is such a big deal. And it's almost, there's been times where my husband's like, what's wrong? And I have to sit back and I'm like, I think I'm having an anxiety attack. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah give me a minute you know but mm -hmm. you, you you don't even realize that you're having it sometimes and and i think that that makes that makes it all the more difficult so thank you for that that was so good so yeah, if you have anything go ahead yeah yeah no no i'm just saying yeah like because you know life is just so busy for all of us that we forget to just be like you know step back a minute and, and be like whoa like am i really okay am i really handling this like like normally or am i like totally maxed out on my capacity to handle these situations or these feelings anymore and or maybe it's you know your marriage is toxic and you're or you know like mentally you cannot process your relationship on your own anymore because even that is you know your mental wellness too and then it's like i said acknowledging it and being like okay like i cannot if your marriage is in that place of a grand canyon then you cannot do it alone. You can't climb out alone. You need somebody to, you know, give you a hand. Um, and so I think that it's just, it's all about acknowledging and inviting and giving your space, yourself the freedom and the permission to ask for help, to seek help, to tell, you know, tell the truth about, or be honest with yourself about where you really are and then to do something about it and to find that healing because, we only have this one shot, right? Like we only have this one chance. And so why would we continue to struggle through like, and you know, with that, when, when we could easily just welcome in the help and, you know, forget about being embarrassed and forget about being ashamed and whatever, because we only have this one chance. So like, why wouldn't we just forget about that fact? And the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of other people who are experiencing the same feelings. So we're never alone in that and letting our relationships and our, you know, thrive, letting our lives thrive, um, because we deserve it. We, we absolutely like God designed us to enjoy this life, um, and to live it to the fullest. And so we shouldn't let, you know, something so, so simple as like, we just can't stop long enough to acknowledge that something isn't right. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love that. And the two nuggets there I heard were one, acknowledge when you need help and two um you didn't say it but i i kind of was sensing it or hearing it is know when to say no like know mm. when you're maxed out you know mm. you said like there's going to be times where you're maxed out and i for me that was yeah because there's there's times where i'm experiencing anxiety but i'm also doing the thing where i'm people pleasing and i'm mm -hmm. saying yes to everything mm -hmm. and not being focused and I and I think that's another really important piece is that if you start to learn where where you where's your max where mm -hmm. do you have to say no where is it where I'm like you know what I'm doing all these other things and now my four pillars are they're suffering so I have to say no to some of those things so that I can strengthen those pillars and then at that point you know you can ascertain whether or not I need help, you know, whether it's going for free help on a podcast or, mm -hmm. you know, talking to um, a coach like you or I, or even, um, you know, whether it's a therapist, whatever it is, but knowing I need help to get out mm -hmm. of this. I thought that was, yeah. that was really awesome. You know what, like the best advice that I've gotten as um, a couple or for my marriage is to be able to say, I'm at, to be able to tell my husband anyways, I'm at a zero, I'm at zero percent. I need you to step in and be the hundred percent for the day. So at any time we've given ourselves permission to step into each step to each other and say, I'm at 30%. Could you make up the next, could you make up the rest of the 70 or maybe we're both at 50% or maybe we're both at a hundred percent and we could handle all the things together. We're both functioning at high capacity. We're doing well and we can just, you know, do it together. No problem. But if I come to him and I say, I'm struggling today, I'm at like max of 15%. He knows that, okay, like I've got to step up for her today. I've got to allow her to either, you know, go on a walk, step away, take a shower, um, you know, or, you know, it's just kind of like a signal of him saying, of a saying, I need your help. Um, this is where I'm at. This is what I can give. And I need you to give the rest of it because I can't today. And so I think that's a good place or a good exercise for you guys to do, to be able to visibly see, like, without having to go into all of it, you know, in the moment, but to really get on the same page each and every day of like, I, you know, I just can't today. Cause I think sometimes we don't say it, we expect them to know, 
we're struggling, we're doing the dishes, we're trying to, you know, pump out, you know, business things and work things. And we're trying to walk the dog and we're trying to change the diapers and we're trying to clean the house and wash the laundry. And we're maxed out and we keep going and going, expecting that he's going to see us doing all these things that he should know, or that she should know that like, we need help and they don't. And I mean, we, I mean, you can't expect anybody to read your mind, you know? And Mm -hmm. so this is a way of saying like, I'm at, I'm at zero. Like today Mm -hmm. I'm at zero. Maybe I know when my husband has a lot of draining stuff going on at work and he's overwhelmed and he's tired and he's, or something happened and he, you know, whatever he can come home and say, I'm at a 15. So like when he comes home, I can't expect him to come in and like the kids run it. Like he needs time. That tells me he needs time to decompress. I need to hold off the kids a little bit longer. Um, maybe not ask him to do so much or to, you know, when he walks in the door, at least I'm not like, take out the trash and do the dishes for me. And I need you, can you do this? I'm going to go to target. Like that's another day. Um, right. yeah. Anyways, right. I just thought that was great advice. <laughs> no, that was great. I've actually never, I've never heard it like that. I've heard, you know, um, I've heard like, it, you know, life marriage is not 50, 50 right. it's like overall. 100. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, okay. I get that. But that's, I love that because it's like, you're right. We can't operate at a hundred percent capacity every day. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing there that's, so there's the two things there I thought were so powerful is one, taking the minute to communicate with your spouse. This is where Mm -hmm. I'm at. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, so that they know, and they're aware all the time. My husband's like, babe, but if you would just tell me, if you would just communicate (laughs) with me and I'm like, "Ah." right. So it's like, I love that. If we just take the time to communicate with him and then the other piece that I, that I was thinking that I'm like, you know what I love about that too, is you guys can then decide because when you're both operating at a hundred percent capacity, everything's getting done. Mm-hmm. But if he can't operate at 200% to make up for, you know what I mean? Right. So it's like, you guys can together decide, all right, I'm not a hundred percent today what's not getting done? Are we okay with these Mm -hmm. couple of things? Are you okay with the fact that I'm not doing laundry today or the dishes are going to wait, you know? And, and if he's not, then maybe it's the thing that's like, okay, great. So then that's the thing that you're going to have to pick up if you're not okay with it. But at least then you guys are on the same page. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things I found is that when two people are starting to feel exhausted Mm -hmm. and things start to become neglected, sometimes the things that get neglected are not, you know, are the things that may be important to the other person. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. by doing that, you're allowing each other the space to be like, look, this is really important to me. So I get it if you can't handle it all, but can, you know, let's make sure that these mm-hmm. things get done. So that's kind of what I was hearing there. Which I yeah. Love. Yeah. And to be at service of each other to say, okay, like if you're at 50%, how can I help you? How can I help you get back up to at least 50 or, you know, mm-hmm. what can I do to help you get back into a healthy range, you know, and maybe that's, you know what, I could really use a walk. I could really use a shower. I could really use, you know, like, and that's, like you said, creating that conversation, but yeah. Yeah. Love that. Okay. So talk to us about the last one, the physical, which is uh, so many, so many feelings about that during quarantine. (laughs) Yeah, man. I mean, like the physical isn't about, you know, the, the next losing the next 20 pounds. I mean, of course it's good to be um, in a good place if you feel like that's where what you need to do is to eat right exercise you know but like really it's about physical love for yourself like body love self-love and um it's not about just what you eat but it's about how do you feel about yourself like when you wake up in the morning are you proud of your body are you proud of its functionality like are you do you even think about how grateful you are that God gave you the gift of walking and moving and breathing. And like, can you really appreciate that now? Are you just stuck on, Oh my gosh, look at that cellulite, you know, like, are you, you know, like, um, because I get in that place. And so, um, you know, I think that you need to, we need to get back to a place of appreciating our bodies for their abilities and what it does, especially if you're a mom, Um, you know, I can, I relate to this aspect a lot because, you know, we've given birth, we've, our bodies have changed, we're carrying babies. And like, we often look at that, like, as this downward spiral of our bodies, but it's like the, the furthest thing from it, because you're, look at what an amazing thing your body created. 
and what your body is capable. I mean, I don't know about you, but like I could hold two babies, stir some mac and cheese and do the laundry at the same time. So mm -hmm. like we just forget about it and we get lost in this um, kind of like frumpy feeling of like, well, I'm no longer like in my, you know, my 20s. So, you know, I'm just going to like wear sweats and, uh, you know, and, and that's okay sometimes. Like I'll rock some sweats anytime, but how does that actually make you feel? And if it's yeah. not providing you appreciation for your body, love for your body, then you have to start um, doing something about it. And, you know, um, one of the challenges that I talk about in my episode about this that you listened to was looking at yourself naked in the mirror. And like, if you're cringing at that, the sound of that, then you probably aren't in a good place with your body, right? Because you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even, can you imagine like looking at my body right now, right? But if that's you, then you probably need a little bit of self-work because when's the last time you <laughs> were like, man, like I'm so hot, you know, or, and, um, and you just need to like, and I think this also helps our marriage in that you get to be able to appreciate your body in the way that your spouse appreciates your body because mm -hmm. guaranteed a hundred percent. Like my husband tells me all the time, he's like, you are like, so you're so sexy. And I'm just like, I don't see it. Like, and so I think that's the problem is that like constantly they want to tell you how gorgeous you are, how handsome you are. But like, if you keep denying it, then they stop telling you because you don't believe it. And if you don't believe it, then, you know, you're not, you're losing your self-confidence, you know, like it just shows up in your posture and your, in your, um, your energy, like all you just, your, your life, you know, like if you don't, you, you can see it, how like you just diminish in your glow and in your, the way that you show up to places. Cause you just kind of feel like, Oh, like everybody's, you know, prettier than me or, Oh, like I don't feel that confident in this area. And it affects those things. Um, and so I really want people to really dial back into appreciating their body, especially if you're like in your thirties now, late thirties, early forties, like we just forget and we don't look at ourselves anymore. We pass by the mirror. And so look at your body and, um, you know, start to love yourself inwardly because, when you love yourself inwardly, it shows outwardly and you feel good about the way you look on the outward, you know, side, which, um, obviously it's not all about looks. I guess I have to say that too, but you know what I mean? Like, it's true right. though. Like how you feel about yourself really does affect all aspects of your life, whether or not we like it. And, um, that's especially for moms, that's a really hard place because we have a lot of scars. We have a lot of, um, you know, things that have changed but looking at it in a beautiful way helps us to really just value ourselves in the way that God values us, our spouses value us. And, and I think that that is such a healthy place to be. Yeah, I love that. And I, just for anyone who thinks that Ashley is only talking about how you look, she's definitely not. One of the things in that episode that you're referring to, mm -hmm. uh, I thought of, um, and this is when I was like, I love this chick. I love her <laughs> because you, one of the things you said is it really drives you crazy when people will sit there and complain uh, about, yeah. you know, oh, well, I'm feeling, you know, I don't feel great. And I know it's because I'm not eating mm -hmm. right. Or I know oh, it's yeah. because of this. And you're it's just hilarious. like, oh my God. So get yeah. up and just, and <laughs> you know. Yeah. That's... I hate that I didn't bring that up. Yes. Like when I'm talking about physical wellness, I'm also talking about like, if your gut, like if your gut health is off, if your health in general is off, like, t like, you know it, we all know it. And I think that's the thing that you're referring to is like, when we have those friends that come to us and they're like, Oh my gosh, like my, my blood pressure is always so high. I can't, you know, I don't understand it. or, you know, obviously they do. Cause most of the time your doctor's like, well, it's because you're doing this or, but most of the time we know. Um, so yeah, like most of the time we know what it is that is, causing the problem and we ignore it and then we wait until it's like you know overblown into several other things but yeah that's my personal pet peeve is when you're going to the doctor to find a solution but you're ignoring the fact that you can take care of the root cause like they're just masking the symptom right so i i'm also calling everybody to really uh, take a look at your physical wellness and not only of like how you perceive yourself, your self-love, your body, um, but also, um, you know, your actual health 
and where yeah. you're at and doing something about it. But yeah, I can't, that's my personal pet peeve is yeah. like, <laughs> I just, no, it's so good. And I think some of the things you talked about too, because, you know, I've heard people say like, well, I like the way I look, which is, you know, that's fine. You know, if, if you like the way you look and you feel great, that's fine. But, but then there's the other piece that, okay, so yes, you like the way you look, but do you feel comfortable when you walk up a flight of stairs mm -hmm. or can mm -hmm. you do things and do you feel comfortable and and if you do, then great, you know, this has nothing to do with size. It has nothing to do with, you know, mm -hmm. a number of pounds or a number on the scale. It's just right. how are you feeling internally? And I think mm -hmm. that's really what was resonating with me when you were talking about it. Yeah, because our ultimate goal is to serve, like if our ultimate goal is to serve our kids, our family, our friends around us, we can't do that if we're not taking care of our bodies in the right way. Like, I mean, maybe now we can get by, right? Like on the mm -hmm. minimum, but it's not going to last. And then who, and I mean, I'm in that situation now, to be honest with my own, with my own parent of, um, she's only barely, she'll be 70 in a couple of years, but because of her choices, life choices of not taking care of herself early on in life, I'm already taking care of her, um, now. And most people her age, um, are doing way better than how she is. Like she's doing as worse as like, people that are in their 90s right now and so like you know what we think that it's not going to affect the people that we love our choices won't affect the people that we love or our kids you know like ah oh, they won't you know it won't whatever i'll just eat these bag of doritos every day and who cares what it does to my heart but like no it does it does affect people because now i'm having to pick up the pieces as a child take care of my mother which I hadn't planned on doing for another 20 years. She can't pick up my, her grandbaby. She cannot carry him because, you know, her body doesn't work that way. Uh, we can't take her certain places because her body doesn't work that way. So if you think that your choices don't affect those and that, you know, sure, you're doing all the things now and whatever, and you're just going to pour yourself out, pour yourself out now, it's going to catch up to you and it's going to catch up to those that love you and that, you know, you ultimately are trying to serve now, but then you will become a detriment to or a burden to later, which is sounds so rude and like, so in your face and yeah. like maybe um, hurtful for some of you to hear, but it's the truth. And I'm a living proof of that situation that, yeah. you know, now we have to care for um, somebody else who I would love to be able to just see, enjoy life still and enjoy their grandkids still my kids still and you know that's not a possibility yeah I love that because and you've said it a couple of times during this conversation of being able to pour out mm -hmm. and I think the person listening today has the heart of some someone who who wants to give they want to mm -hmm. pour out yes and yes. the reason why I felt that the four pillars were so important to, to talk to her about or to teach her about was because of this old adage, you can't pour from an empty mm -hmm. cup. Mm -hmm. So if we're not filling ourselves, if we're not strengthening these pillars, if not, we're not filling ourselves or, you know, working on these areas, we can't then serve other people. We can't mm -hmm. then serve as right. wives and mothers and daughters and sons. Mm -hmm. We can't do those things because like you just um, like the example you just gave us, we ourselves are broken down. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of like, if you won't do it for yourself, mm -hmm. do it for your children, do it for your husband, do it for the people around you that you love, mm -hmm. that you, that you want to be there for. And I thought that was, you know, and I say this about grace all the time, you know, on the, in the grace fuel podcast where I'm like, you have to pray for grace to be filled with it so that you can give it out. Mm -hmm. And this is just another one of those things where like, you have to work on these things mm -hmm. so that you're filling your own cup and taking care of yourself. So I love all of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. This was such a great conversation. Hey guys, if you found anything practical or helpful, share it with a friend, share it with another mom who might need some of these tips. You guys make sure you check out Beatrice Vargas's podcast, the grace field life podcast. It has some tangible marital tips that are really, really good. I really enjoy listening to her podcast. Make sure you check that out. And as always, subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And I hope you guys have an awesome week. Catch you next time.